Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I've got no idea where I'm going, so we're going to have a little creative time with Tracy because Tracy's got no idea what she's going to create because I've, I've done no prep apart from just cutting the card out before I press the live button. Um, I've literally been cutting bits of card just so that I've got some, but other than that, I'm like, what shall we create? No idea. So I'm just going to go with what's on my desk. I've cut a piece of Pink Frog Smooth card for my matting and layering. So my first piece that we're going to work on is three and a half inches by seven. So a longer format, like sort of, it's not double length, but the longer elongated format. So it's three and a half inches by seven. Then the black mat is three and three quarters by seven and a quarter. And the card is four and a half by eight, just so it gives a larger mat, just so that you can see that. So we'll work on our piece that's three and a half by seven. No idea what I'm going to do. I'm just literally going to use what's on my desk, colours and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the... It does help if I get my packaging out, doesn't it? So you can see what I'm doing. Where are you? I've already got it out. No, I'll just be faffing, that's what it is. Oh, good grief. So let's... I've got them all in order, believe it or not, so... I should have been... There we go. So I'm, I'm going to use the Snippet Stencil Jar SS10. I was looking for the number. I've got that many numbers in my head. M my brain just isn't working at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of use the jar sort of off, off on the edge. So we're going to get some low tack tape. And you'll know that I've not done any prep because I keep reaching for things. So I'm going to use, it doesn't matter which way you use your stencil, you can use it either way, but sort of so it's off the edge a little bit. And then I'm going to add some low tack tape just to hold that in place. And really, you, you know by now that I don't hold a lot of stencils in place, but I'm holding it in place just with it being off the edge because it, it just makes it a little bit more awkward just to hold in place. So I've got that held in place with low tack tape. And I'm going to use a blue that I love using. So I'm going to use Salty Ocean. And I'm going to use one of my smaller blending tools. The blending tools are on offer at the moment with 10% off with code BRUSH, all capitals at checkout. So I'm going to use one of the smaller ones and I'm going to come down with my fingers and just add a good layer of that Salty Ocean just to my blending brush. So add a really good layer. So I've got a nice, thick, rich layer of ink on there. Now, if I just want a light application, I can just hold my hand further up on the blending tool and it'll just give me a softer application. You can see I start with the ink here and then come in to my jar. And the the trick is just to keep going over. Just keep going over and you'll get that beautiful blend. But as you can see, by the time I come to this edge here, it's lighter, which is absolutely fine. Now, if you want it a little bit darker, bring your fingers down and then hold the brush like so. And you then get a darker application but what I recommend is just to get that lovely feathered blended look is to go over several times there we go and I'm leaving a little bit of light area just in the center because it just makes it more appealing and makes it look like 
there is sort of light shining on the jar. I'm then going to take, let's grab some scrap card. I've actually got some scrap card because I've been cutting out. So I'm just going to take off some of that colour. There's hardly any on there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of prize ribbon. And I'm going to add the prize ribbon just to the edge of the jar. So I'm just adding that to the edge. So I've got the darkest amount of colour here on the right hand edge. It's up to you where you have your darkest colour. Just pretend where your light's coming from. But you can see, look how many times I go over when I just add the darker colour. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that prize ribbon. Look where most of it is. It's on the stencil. And just apply. There we go. So we can then remove our stencil. Let's just, I always forget, you know, it doesn't matter how many times I do this, I always forget which piece of low tack tape I've laid down first. I'm dreadful. There we go. Now don't yank sort of at the low tack tape, even though it says low tack tape, just, just be mindful of how you're pulling that. You can see now that I've got the beautiful jar just on the edge. Oh, do you know? I'm dangerous. There we go. So you can see now that I've got that beautiful jar just on the edge of that longer format of card. So what we're going to do then is grab a piece of copy of paper, which guess what, Tracy hasn't got. Right. And then I'm going to add, let's move the card. I may already have one of these, but what the heck, we're just going to do it all. It's creative time with Tracy. We can do whatever we want. So I'm just going to pull this ink off that's on here. Hopefully there's enough ink and I don't need to apply any more, but we'll soon know, won't we? But look how much ink is still on there. It's surprising, isn't it, how much is on your blending brushes, but you can see from the blending brushes just how light you can go. So we're cutting out a mask. So we're going to cut out this mask. Let me grab there we go. So we're just going to cut around our mask. Now cut right to the edge of your mask. You don't want a white gap on this. I re To be honest, I could have just cut the lid part off. I didn't really need to cut the whole jar off if I didn't, if you didn't want to, but at least you've got that mask then for something later. is rather pale I can hardly see what I've I've done I've just tidied my craft room and I'm just going to chuck that on the floor now just like Tracy does I'm dreadful let's just move that up a little bit let's move this up there we go right so I've got my mask now and I can just place that over the top like so. Now, if you want to hold that in place, you know, you don't want it moving around, just take, obviously you can use your masking sheets. I use copy of paper when I'm demonstrating just because it's a little bit quicker and because I do every stage and because I've done no prep, let's be honest. So let's just add that here. Let's make sure that's on the edge 
Yeah. Doesn't matter, I can easily draw a line in, which is what I'm probably going to do anyway. So I've got my Abutilon stamp on my desk, so I'm going to use the Abutilon stamp. So let's use, is that copier paper? That would be rather handy if it was. No, it's card. Right. So let's take this small Abutilon and a, little, a small acrylic block put it on my desk already and I'm going to take the morning mist ink now most of you know by now now I adore morning mist ink it's just one of them inks that it's a must for me and I'm, I'm a creature of habit I tend to if I find a product I love I tend to use it over and over because that's the whole point it gets used so we're going to take this grey ink and we're going to add the ink to the little Abutilon stamp and dab really lightly. So let's have that one sort of facing that way. Now don't forget, I'm making it up as I go along. There we go. So we've got a nice, beautiful light stamping with the grey, which is wonderful. And if I want to, I can join these just so that it's there, like so. So I can quite easily join those, which works really well. Now, I need to put my finger straight on that ink. I want a little bit of a mask, so let's just use the second generation. It should be enough. Well, I'm doing everything. Look how nice that looks in second generation. Can you see that? I'm up and down, up and down, but look, it looks lovely in second generation. I really like it in the second generation. So let's... There we go. So we're going to cut a little mask out. And don't, don't panic, you haven't got to cut out that little branch. I mean, it doesn't matter. Just the just the little little flower. There we go. So we'll just cut the because it doesn't matter, you know, if you think about plants in the garden, stems are all intertwined all over each other. So we'll just cut the little bud. A little bud out there we go and what you can do is if you have little masks like this just use a piece of acetate put some low tack tape behind and stick them onto a piece of acetate and then you don't lose them so i don't even know which one i'm stamping for so let's just add this here and then i'll ink my stamp and worry about it after so ink my stamp because it's creative time with Tracy. It's all about playing. So I don't even need the mask in some ways. But Tracy does faff a lot. Let's have that there. Like so. There we go. Let's remove the mask and that appears behind. Just lovely, lovely jubbly. Right. Then we'll add this. Again, with the grey. Move your stamp around so different parts of the stamp appear because it works really nicely if you just sort of got different parts of the stamp. Look, that's going behind it. Lovely, lovely. So just in case. I will lift this up so that you can see, but just sort of go with what feels good to you. Don't, don't be too precise. Um, you can't, let me just think. 
looked like I, I can't make my mind up. I want it sort of more there. That's it. Go with the flow, she says, and she just faffs for England, deciding what she actually wants to do. So we'll just add this here. We'll take the little one. So don't be put off when you've just got little masks. Just place them on a piece of acetate. So we'll just ink again. We'll have that up there. Like so. I just love how you can sort of connect it. Now, I definitely don't want six. Let's take that off. Take, take your copy of paper. Let's just dab that off. And what we're going to do is just ink this floral on its own. And where are you going to put that one? I think we'll add that just here, like so. And in a lot of instances, you don't actually need the mask. Oh, it's on here. I tried to pick that up then. So you could add some second generation stamping. So we've got this. Oh, yes. I like the second generation. So we could add the second generation. I quite like this second generation. And I'll just keep. Let's grab a piece of copy of paper. So we'll ink that floral up again. Then we'll stamp the first generation off. And then let's add a little bit of second generation. Just, just to give it more depth. Just really helps to give it more depth. So we'll ink again. Stamp off the excess. Let's have both of them this time. And then we'll stamp off the excess. And then let's let's do sort of second generation. Like so. Really nice with the second generation. It's sort of more appealing, sort of gives it some depth. Let me just move this out of the way just so that you can see that has now got a bit more depth with sort of the second generation and we can easily go back in and add second generation if you wanted so if I wanted to I could ink that I could take the little bud stamp off the excess and then just add so we want that there so just add a little bit of a second generation bud there it just works so nicely just lovely love it so what do I want for just fine there we go and I'm just going to use um, a pencil and I'm just going to sort of add some branches just into my water. You don't have, they don't have to be, you know, because you've got 10 flowers. There doesn't have to be 10 stems because when you have these abutilons, you have a lot of flowers just just on the stem. So I'm just sort of adding a few stems in there, which you're saying, Tracy, I can hardly see them. That's okay. We'll define those. That's no problem at all. So what I'm going to do is take my Inktense pencil. Do I want my Inktense pencil? 
or shall I? No, I'm sure I've got a Prisma colour on my desk. Let me have a look. Yeah, I've got my Prisma colour black. So what I'm going to do is sort of join so it looks part of the plant. Just so, and don't forget, do your stems at, at different lengths because stems are never the same length. Just so that you've got those in your jar. And they look lovely. So what we can do then is we can then frantically look in our, did I pull it out? Of course I didn't pull it, oh I did. With your stencil, you've got the cutout piece. So let's take the cutout piece and let's grab a little bit of that prize ribbon, just a little bit at the end of your, what's this called? Blending brush, poor Tracy, and just add a little bit of the detail just in just on certain areas of your jaw I'm just going to blend this a little bit more here and then let's add this detail in here Okay, so you've just got a few little details in there. You can wipe this off or you can quite easily spritz with water and then cut out that little heart, should you wish. Let's just clean this up. I love how we've got the cutout bit because it just offers more possibilities, I feel, just so that you can see this. Now, Creative Time with Tracy, sounds so weird saying my own, my own name, is not about rushing. It's about enjoying what we're doing. So, I've got one of my pencils out. I haven't got the other though. So, I'm terrible. I don't uh, have a swatch because I'm a nightmare. Let's, what kind of, I quite like that olive green. And let's have some, what colour are you? I have that crimson. So I'm not a good advertisement because really if you've got swatches, that is really good. I don't have swatches because I can't be bothered to have all the bits of paper everywhere. That's just me. Um, it's not right, but it's, it's me. It's me all over. Right, so the first thing that I want to do, so let's just grab this little bucket here. And you can see I've got my low tack tape on here. The first thing I'm going to do is sharpen my pencils. And you're supposed to, if you do it properly, you're supposed to turn the sharpener. However, it, I'm sorry, it's cack handed for me. So it drives me mad. So just so that you know what I'm doing on one side, I am sharpening my pencils, but you're supposed to turn the sharpener, not your pencil. So I do like to work with a sharp pencil. I will tell you the colours. And my sharpener was a lovely present from my friend Catherine. And it's a wonderful, wonderful sharpener. So let's give that a sharpen. And now I've got, bear with me, let's grab that piece of, I need a piece of card. Let's grab this one. So I'm just spending a little bit of time just sharpening my pencils and before you sort of go 
to your colouring, you really should sort of spend, well, you don't have to do anything, of course. You know, I spoke then as if you have to do it, but I just find that if you sharpen your pencils, they just work a little bit better. What other sharpeners have I got? I've actually got a Prisma sharpener. You know, you can never have too many sharpeners, can you? And this one, what I mean is, you're supposed to turn your sharpener, not your pencil. Just so that you know that the professionals will tell you that. Rather than moving the actual pencil. Supposed to prevent breakages more, especially if you clonk them on the surface like I do, which aids the breaking. All professionalism here, you know, not. Right, okay. Let's just do a bit of colouring now because we want to add some colour to our florals. Now, I haven't used black, so if I'd used black, I would need to blot and dry it a little bit or leave it to dry a little bit because your Prisma colours will pick up that black ink and you really don't want that. So let's start with the greens first. So I'm going to add a little bit of green just sort of to these areas here, which you will see come to life when I when I've finished colouring. So it's a nice little floral to colour. But what, what I'm also trying to show you is that just because you've got something that is small, as in a small a, a, a small floral, doesn't mean that that can't really pack some interest. That's just, so I'm just adding a bit of colour. I should have bought an Abutilon flower in for you. They, co they come in so many colours and they have this sort of beautiful veining on the top. And what's helpful is if I tell you the colour, isn't it, of the pencil. This is olive green. PC911. So I'm just adding a little bit of the green. Now, if you just like a touch of colour, will you stick with just a touch of colour? This is your colouring and your project. But just remember that it's about sort of enjoying that process. It's not about rushing it all because you think things have to be done in a set time scale we can just enjoy ourselves in our creative time so i'm just adding a bit of color it will become more obvious to you as i add a little more color so let me lift that up you can see i've just added a little bit of color at the top area so i'm going to then sort of blend that darker green with chartreuse, which I can hardly see the colour, but I'm sure it's 989. I need to remember that colour because I need to order another one. You can actually get the Prisma colour in single colours, so it's quite handy. So I'm just adding a little bit of the green. Now with the second generation prints i'm actually going to sort of color a little bit lighter and a little bit darker on the more prominent pieces so i'm just blending the dark green just with that short use can you tell i like saying that so just add that just with and i always find projects like this you know even sort of you know i know we've got christmas looming 
but you know that period in between Christmas and New Year? I love doing projects like this because they're just, they're so mindful. It's just, it's enjoyable. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more of that darker green now. just to give a little bit more detail. Now, obviously, you know from this now, I'm going to colour all of these abutilons. So if you wish, you can fast forward. I've even missed that one. You can fast forward the colouring if you wish, but the whole point of creative time is that we reconnect and just enjoy our time together. So I'm just adding a little bit of the darker green, just going back in and just adding a little bit more of that darker green. It's not until you colour everything in that you realise that you've actually missed a little bit of an area, but you don't notice that until you start colouring in. So just blend the green. I'm going to leave the pale ones until I've coloured, oh, I'll colour that a bit, just maybe until I've coloured the darker ones in to see how they're going. But you can see I leave a little bit of white just to sort of give it a little bit of a, a shine. There we go. And then if we had some colour to the floral we can then sort of see where we're going maybe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my dark colour which is Crimson Lake PC925 so I'm going to add some of that darker colour just so you can just so you can see where we're going Plus, it really helps once you add this bit of dark, you can see where you need to add the green at the top. So I'm just adding a little bit of that dark colour. Now, I'm adding a little bit at the bottom, but look where my fingers are on my pencil. They're not too low down, which means that I don't press too hard. So now I can see where I miss bits just on this top bit here, but even lighter on those paler florals. So you can just see, I'm just adding that dark, this is my darkest colour. I'm just adding... little bit of that dark colour and when I'm adding this dark colour so lightly it hasn't got much depth so I'm just scribbling this on like so and on this floral which is the second generation I'm just going to come in a little bit lighter and again I can see where I've missed a bit and here so I'm just going to come in very lightly on this floor it's the minute the minute I add this I can sort of see where I'm going with the colouring Especially when you've got some sort of detail. I've had a bit of green down there. When you've got some detail lines. So 
So it's good just to take your time and just enjoy the process. And it's up to you if you want to colour yours a little bit differently. So just adding that colour very lightly, just very lightly on this one. We'll do the buds in a second. Again, a little bit of light colour. And I can see now that I haven't added the green. And again, you can see where my hands are on that pencil. So just colour this in. And again, I can see where I've just missed the tip there. So you're just sort of adding what I call that base colour. So just add your base colour. And it doesn't have much life at the moment, much depth. Because you've just added that colour really lightly. So it hasn't got much life or depth at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my second colour, which is PC924, which is crimson red. And there's not that much difference in colour when you first add this layer. I'm only adding this now so you can see. So I'm just going to add a little touch of the 924, just going into the darker colour, very lightly. Now don't get frustrated with your colouring. You know, it, it you, the layers don't happen in five seconds. Just give it a little bit of time. Just to build up your layers a little bit. And you don't want to break down your card. I know I repeat myself, but you don't want to break down your card too quickly. So my lightest colour for me is orange, PC918. Now you might be using a different colour for your lightest colour. Or you may be using completely different colours altogether. That's absolutely fine. But I'm leaving a little bit of a white area, a white sort of patch. Because it just sort of gives everything a shine. So let's just give these. Now, this is the kind of project that I think you should do when you're just relaxing. When you're stuck for an idea and you're just, while you're thinking about other ideas, you're whiling away an hour or so just colouring. And this is, this is one of those projects. And I know we're whiling away a little bit of time. And that's the whole point when we're being creative. Just to while away a little bit of time together. So what I'm going to do now is go back. I'll do the green later. So I'm going to go back to my PC925. My hand, my fingers are going in a little bit further down on that pencil. Just to bring in a little bit more darkness. However, I don't press so hard that I'm not going to be able to add more. So I'm just going to come in 
and just add a little bit more of that dark detail just at the sort of the very points just to add a little bit more detail this is slightly lighter there we go and what i love about the youtube channel is that you can choose what you watch so it means then that you can tune in at any time you can pause and you can play on your tv but also you can come back in stages if you wish so i'm going in with the darker color and just adding the touches of darker colour. I sort of go up to the top. I'll show you. Let me just add this darker colour. Let me just show you. I sort of bring the colour because, oh, that doesn't help the camera, does it? Because, let me bring it down because they're beautiful on the colour sort of comes up here as well. So I add a bit of the sort of darky, reddy colour up there as well. So, and it just looks really nice then. Just bringing the colour up and it it's sort of, I know what I'm trying to say, I'll show you on this one. When I bring the colour up here, it differentiates that sort of, well, it's not the callus, the, the outer bit that's green sort of emphasizes that bit so let's just a little bit of the color here and then we'll bring in a little bit of the lighter color in here i've now got an itchy nose Shall I kind of share these things with you? I don't want you to feel left out, you know, and that I don't share. I often overshare, but there you go. So this is just a little bit lighter with it being the second generation. Right, so we're on this one now. But again, just sort of be mindful about not pressing too hard. There we go. Let me put a bit more green on there. And then just add. Now, creative time with Tracy is always going to be a little bit longer because I literally pick up the camera, the phone and decide I'm going to go and record and that's all about because I feel like creating, I want to create and that's part of the of the fun There we go. So I can see now just with a little bit more definition that the flowers are now coming to life. And I think really you should only colour when you really feel like it. Because it's not a process that you actually rush. So I'm then going to come in just with the lighter red. And go in and just blend the lines a little bit. I don't need to press on with this one too hard either. It's just softening out 
the white areas in the card just so that you get a smoother feel to your project. We're just going in with the lighter red, which is the PC924. Just colour this a little bit lighter. The second generation ones. So you're then going to come in with the orange. We'll come in and with the orange, go into the previous colours just to blend those previous colours a little bit more. So come in with your orange and blend those colours. Now, a lot of the time I might do three or four layers. With the Abutilon, it doesn't really need as many layers before you get a beautiful result. So this orange is just smoothing everything out. And again, I'm still leaving a little bit of the white area, which will sort of give me a little bit of a shine on that floral. So you come in a little bit firmer with the darker florals and come into your previous colours with that orange just to blend that out. If you don't want to leave a sort of a touch of the white, you can easily put the white back in with a white pen. And obviously we're going to add touches of white. So we will definitely add touches of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the chartreuse now. I can see exactly where my green needs to be. Just going to bring a little bit more short use But if you haven't, just add, where's my little, just add a little bit of colour to your board as well. So we just want to add a little bit of colour to the buds. Just go in very lightly again. So this is just the dark colour at the moment. Just going over the whole bud. Just to add a little bit of that colour. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of the dark green just to the board as well. And it doesn't matter if each board looks a little bit different. The boards, it's it's nature. No two florals are exactly the same. So I'm just going in and adding a little bit of that dark. And you can see these are small areas that you're working on. So this is why it's good if you've got your pencils sharpened. So I'm now sort of blending with the short juice and bringing those buds to life as well. They're part of your project, so you want those to come to life. And I'm then going to 
come in with a little bit of the orange on the bud as well. Just like so. And I'll probably have a little sort of touch of white at the base of the of the bud. Okay. So we'll come in with a little bit more of the dark just to give a little bit more more definition to that floral so a little bit more definition just to the buds just so they look part of our arrangement just a little bit more darkness and then I'm just going to blend with the orange so I didn't even use the second red I've just blended with the orange there we go now for me I always like to let things rest if I'm going to add touches of white, but can you see where we've left that white area and it sort of gives it a shine. And what it does, it sort of domes that flower. Even though it's all flat, it gives it the uh, illusion that it's slightly domed. So what I then like to do is I like to grab my Posca pen and more often than not, I will give it more time to rest than I'm doing now. And then I will just go in and sort of pick out some of the, the areas that I want in white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up so that you can see. So we've got this area here that we left white and I sort of re-add some of my Posca pen, a few little touches of white here and there just so that it looks like it's got a bit of a shine. So I add a few little white touches, make sure that shine, and then a few dots to the bottom here, just so that we've got a little bit. So I'm going to add a little bit of a touch of white just at the base there. Make sure this has got the shine here, maybe a little bit here. And I'll show you what I mean by the sort of shine that we've got. On our florals. Because it really does add much needed depth, brightness. A little bit of white there. And again, I will lift this up so that you can see where I've added those touches of white. So I'm going to add there, and I'm just going to add a few little dots. Let's just add a few little dots to the, just so you can see that. Touches of white really sort of lift everything. You don't need much, but it really lifts. But even by adding a touch of white here at the top, it sort of gives it that that bit of a, a sheen that really helps. It works really nicely. The only problem Tracy has is she really doesn't know when to when to stop when it comes to the white pen. I am dreadful. I could play all day, which doesn't really help you when you're watching. 
looks like Tracy move on. But I do find it difficult to move on because I just can't help myself. There we go. So then I want to give this a little bit more definition. And I think this is my favourite bit about YouTube is it really feels like me. No rushing. It's ju I feel like I'm, I'm presenting me and I just love it. Right. So let's grab some kitchen roll. And just to give that more definition, just so that it shows more, I've got my kitchen roll. I'm going to take my hickory smoke just to give that a little bit more definition. And of course, the kitchen roll would be in the way, wouldn't it? So I'm going to add a little bit of the grey just around my florals. And it, it just really makes that pop. Also, I love the fact that, you know, I'm using my products. They're not sitting on the shelf looking pretty. They're not meant to look pretty. They're meant to look used. They're meant to bring enjoyment. All right, there we go. So let's add a little bit more darkness there. And it starts to really, I can't lift this piece of card up at all. It really starts to come to life. And of course, those of you that follow me will know that this is one of my favorite things to do. Is just to add this. I absolutely love it. So then just pick up the tinted water and then just blend that out. Oh, I do love doing this. And the problem is I have to remember that you are watching because as I always say, I do lose myself very easily in the process of doing this. But it just makes me happy. There we go. Let's just blend that out. Then pick up the tinted water and just blend. Just blend it out to nothing. It won't sort of blend or move if you haven't got card that allows you to move that ink. Card is always, always so, so important. It really is. So important. So let's go around our jar. Now, the jar, if you remember, we've used oxide. So you need to be mindful that you don't get too close to your jar. So I'm going to take my ink tense pencil and we're going to go around the jaw, just there, a little bit darker. And I can pick up the tinted water of the gray, no problem at all, and sort of go into that and just drag that out, just so that it's a little bit darker. And don't sort of panic at this stage because we're going to add more depth to our jar as well. There we go. 
so the jar won't look as pale. I think I've picked some debris up from my non-stick craft sheet. Now, I always, I always do like to sort of faff at this stage. I sort of, I do like to come in and add a little bit more darkness to certain areas. Just to give a little bit more darkness. Use that water just to soften the edges. But when you come in with a little bit more darkness, it starts to really pop a little bit more. Now, I'm no professional when it comes to colouring, but what I do like to do is do something that I'm happy with. And also something that is achievable by anybody. just coming in see that tinted water sort of helps you to blend everything out let me just and the more i stare at it the more i play can't help myself so let's just add a little bit here and a little bit there. So I'm just giving the whole piece a little bit more definition. The definition really sort of lifts that. So let's clear our area. And I'm just going to flick some water on the grey area. Just to soften that a little bit. Right. Of course, it will have gone on the jar a bit because, come on, I can't aim that good. Okay. So what we're going to do then is bring a little bit more definition to our vase. Let's grab the water, let's bring this in. So I'm going to take the prize ribbon. So we'll take the prize ribbon. And you can you see how flooded it is with water? Just dab that onto your kitchen roll and just take a little bit away. So you've just taken a little bit of that colour away and what you're going to do is come in and bring a little bit more of that prize ribbon and sort of blend it out to nothing don't worry about your definition pieces your lines and things like that because that's why you've got the cut out piece You've got the cutout piece because we can redefine those. But the reason you're doing this with a little bit of water is it makes the jar look all watery. It really does. So I'm using that tinted water now and I'm just dragging the tinted water out. Okay, so we're just dragging that out. And I'm just using the tinted water just to drag that out I can then go back into the neat color that's hardly got any water on it and I can just bring a little bit more of that darkness 
drag it out until your brush is a bit scratchy. And then when you've got rid of most of the colour, use your tinted water and just drag that. There we go. And then we'll just add our sort of splats of water. And you're going to let that do its thing just for a couple of seconds. But I love how it's sort of, the jar looks really watery. Really appeals to me, that does. And then let's use a clean piece of kitchen roll this side so you can see it's all clear now. Let's just dab. Look how much you lift. But look how beautifully watery the jar looks. To look good. It doesn't take much to amuse me, honestly. Right. So what I'm going to do then, can you guess? TE11, the background stamp. So let's take the background stamp. And what I want to do now is I want the text to feel quite watery as if it's got movement to it. I don't want to spray the card anymore because it's sprayed enough, but there is water on there. And I'm going to use Distress Oxide hickory smoke and I'm going to use the hickory smoke and I'm just going to place it on my card I'm not pressing and use my finger very lightly with my finger I lift it up so that you can see do you like how I place the ink pad face down so that it goes all over me non-stick craft sheet so I want you to take the stamp place it on the damp card and then just use your finger just your finger. Take the ink pad again. Place it. Don't press it yet. Just use your finger. Wonderful. Then do the same again. Hickory smoke. Don't forget the card is wet. Just your finger. Let's add a little bit of text to our jar which is also very wet. So again, when you're on there, place it on, don't press, use your finger. And again. Place it on and use your finger. Let's put the lid on and let me just show you And that's oxide, so it will react a little bit with the moisture, but it's a very, very soft look. Don't you think? It's just a, a beautifully soft look, and I just love it. Right. I'm then going to grab my little wren from here. Take the red and then grab another acrylic block like you do. Now I bet I oh I have. Right, okay. So now my bird is facing that way and I want him to look at the flowers. So I'm going to take a piece of acetate and I'm going to take grey ink. You know, normally I use black. I'm going to take grey and I'm going to add my wren to the acetate. Now, what I want you to remember is it's grey. That's the whole point. And I'll, I'll just place this on here so it's grey. And I'm using a Versafine Claire because it's wet, it stays wetter longer. Now, I'm not smearing it, I'm just dabbing it. You can lift your acetate, there we go. Now, you can see my beard is a little bit watery, which is perfect for this project, but if you want to add a little bit more colour to give it more definition, well, it's no problem. Let's go in with a touch of the hickory smoke, so just grab a little bit of water in case I need it to blend it. Pick up a little bit of that 
water D yes i just remembered i used blue not that it matters that we could have a little bit of blue on there as well use that because you can't see what i'm doing so pick up the gray which will have a little tinge of blue on and you can go in and you can fill in the white areas if you wish with some of that gray however if that isn't enough for you i haven't got my heat tool i'm not even going to bother with my heat tool if that isn't enough for you let me just blot the moisture off let's clean that shouldn't really go onto a wet surface but hey ho let's grab let's grab my pencils so i'm going to grab let's grab as you can see nothing is pulled out but is it ever cool gray so we can have cool gray no i don't want the cool gray do you like how i, I suddenly pull it out and then say no what, what does that say warm gray let's have a warm gray and we've got the black out okay so now you've got a beard facing the other way and i've got warm grey pc1056 and i'm well aware that i've been on the video now for an hour but i i do feel that it's important that we spend time together just going through a few of these things so you can color your whole beard in if you wish It's entirely up to you. Or you can just add touches of the detail because obviously I've got this water effect going on. So for this project, it works quite nicely. But you could quite easily sort of add a little bit more detail look where my fingers are on my pencil just go over with your pencil like so and you can fill in the areas of the white with your pencil again look where my hands are on the pencil they just filling in but not too much I can sort of keep some of the detail just on the beard if I wish there we go but it's entirely up to you how sort of dark you add the details i can also use my pencil and just add shading underneath if you wish i will use my ink tense pencil but i'm trying to think obviously if you haven't got every product different ways that you can just add them where have you gone so let's add some touches of white so we can add some touches of white now just to our little beard and then we can add some shading just underneath a little bit of water there we go blend that out quite nicely Just so that it's blended there we go and whilst this is still slightly damp I'm going to use a smaller Posca pen as you can see it's got a finer point and it is 0 0.7 millimeters PC 1 MR and with it being a smaller Posca pen I just get slightly smaller 
splatters. Okay. So then I'm going to want my wording. Let's put this A5 stamp away. There we go. And I put my hand all over the stamp. That's the acetate. Just so that I get black ink all over me. Let's just place that back. Just so that it's out of our way. And then we've we got PC8. Which one's got the quiet place on? There we go. So uh, TE13 has got the words a quiet place. So I'm going to use a quiet place. It's just something about that I just love. Where are you? There it is. A quiet place. And I'll just keep repeating the sentiment because that's a habit of mine. Just in case you didn't know what I said five seconds before. So we're then going to use the Nocturne ink. Make sure I'm not stamping onto my packaging, which I do quite frequently. Just add a quiet place. I personally don't think that is very straight. That's better. And then, where did I place that? There we go. We'll just cut our sentiment out. And you'll notice I tend to use big scissors for cutting sort of my sentiments out and smaller Pergamano scissors for my fussy cutting. I want that sentiment so that it's not too bulky. There we go. And we're going to add a quiet place here with my adhesive. And what I love is that the stems of the flower are there, but it's very subtle. And I love the fact the jar is very sort of watery without me having to try. Just love that. Right. Just add little bit of definition and shading under that sentiment. Now you'll know that when you go here you just touch it slightly because you've got that blue on there. There we go. I do love how watery the the jar is and my little beard. Just loving. Right, so I'm going to add that now to my black mat. Now you could do an insert for this card by just stamping one of the little abutilon flowers on the inside and it would look really lovely. So add this to our mat try to sort of get one edge right and then I like to sort of lift it up a little, little bit because I can see what I'm doing. So just add that. Then we'll add this to our card blank. Makes a huge difference when you add that matting and layering. Just like out the difference that makes, just the matting and layering makes a huge, huge difference. Now, I want you to remember that this is wet. So really, before you add your touches of white, you really should let, let it dry. Which I will do. 
just so that you really need to add your, your touches of white. Because mine isn't dry, I'm going to cheat with a little bit of paint, a little bit of white paint. You hardly need any. And I'm just going to use the paintbrush that I can't find. Let's just make sure it's clean and not muddy. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that white and I'm going to add a little bit of the white here. And by using the acrylic paint, the opaque, it's just a little bit more prominent. Plus, I'm also adding texture to the touches of white. Now my paint, Sennelier paint, is quite thick, but that's okay. So let's just add little touches of white. You hardly need any touches of white, but remember when you've added those touches of white, give your brush a really good clean. And obviously you will have jars of water on your desk to make the clean up of your brush much more simplified. But just make sure that you've got that pigment out of there. Are you impressed that I actually remember to clean my brush? And then you've got your beautiful card which I just love. All flat apart from the sentiment, completely flat, but it's got so much life, brightness, dimension, even without cut out pieces, just so that you can see that. So I hope you enjoyed the step-by-steps and I hope you'll give that a try. Love to all and I shall see you all soon. Bye for now.